This is it. You've watched and rewatched and revised and adjusted every moment of your program, and now you're ready to share it with the world. Or are you? First things first, if you believe your program is complete, watch it full screen, all the way through from start to finish. Try to remove yourself from the role of editor and convince yourself that you're seeing it for the first time. Position the playhead at the very beginning, then press the play full screen button at the bottom of the viewer. Your program will immediately begin playing. The space bar will still work to pause, and so will the J, K, and L keys. By the way, use the escape key to exit full screen mode. We learned how to insert a gap in part six of this training, and that's something every program needs at the beginning and the end. Chances are you've already done this, but if not, position your playhead on the first frame of your project and press the keyboard shortcut Option W to insert the gap. Shorten it to one second if you prefer, and do the same thing at the end of your project. There are three things an editor usually asks for when finishing a program. A file to submit to the channels, a file for uploading to YouTube or another service, and a DVD. Start by finding the Share Menu button. All three of these functions start in the same place. From the Share Menu, select Master File. A master file is a top quality file using the same video format as your project and is required for submitting to CCTV's channels. Selecting Master File brings up a window where you can change the name of your file and make other changes. The other settings under this Info tab can be left as they are. There's no reason to change anything under the Settings tab, but since you're editing on a shared computer, it's a good idea to check them anyway. Click the Settings tab and make sure these settings are correct. Format should be set to Video and Audio. Video Codec should be set to Source Apple ProRes 422. Open With can be set to QuickTime Player. Once you've checked the settings, click Next to select the Save Location. The window that opens should look similar to a Finder window. The most important point is that the file must be saved to your hard drive, not the internal Macintosh HD drive, and not to your SD card. Many editors create a folder on their hard drive called Finished Projects for saving all their master files. After clicking Save, you can check the status of the export by opening the Background Tasks window and looking under Sharing. This must reach 100% before you quit the program. When complete, the file will open in QuickTime Player. Watch a few seconds of it to check for video and audio quality, then close the file. <laughs> After the master file is saved to your hard drive, copy it to the CCTV Dropbox. Go ahead and quit or hide Final Cut from the Final Cut Pro menu to continue. CCTV's editing computers have an icon on the desktop that opens the Finder directly to the server and our Dropbox. Double click to open it in a Finder window, then press Command N to open a second Finder window. Locate your file, then position the windows so you can see them both. Now just drag the master file from your drive and drop it directly into the Dropbox folder. You'll get a message stating that you won't be able to see items after placing them in the Dropbox. Just click OK. Wait for the progress bar to complete before ejecting your hard drive. Be sure to talk to CCTV's programming coordinator and fill out a program contract so you can see your program on CCTV's channels. Many producers make a compressed HD file 
to save in their archive since it takes up much less hard drive space than the master file. The process is almost the same. Start by selecting the share button, then select Apple Devices 720p. This name may seem unintuitive. After all, you certainly want your file to be viewable by more than just devices designed by Apple. This is simply Apple's name for what should be labeled H.264 720p. H.264 is a compressed HD format that can be played using many different applications and devices and is ideally suited to uploading to YouTube. The share window you'll see is very similar to the master file window. Give the file a name under the Info tab before proceeding. Once again, you shouldn't change anything under the Settings tab, but you should still check to make sure these settings are correct. Format should be set to Apple Devices. Video Codec should be set to H.264 Better Quality. Resolution will be set to 1280 by 720. After that, click Next and follow the same steps we used earlier to save an H.264 file of your project to your hard drive. Most everybody wants to take home a DVD of their finished project, so here are the steps to create a simple, easy-to-play disc. If you followed the last couple steps to create a master file and an H.264 file, you can probably guess how to start. Press the Share button and select DVD. And once again, you're presented with the standard Final Cut Pro Share window. In this case, nothing under the Info tab is particularly important, but you're welcome to update the name of the project here. It's the Settings tab we really need to look at. Just like the other two processes in this section, it's important to check these settings. Output device should be set to the internal optical drive on CCTV's iMac computers, not hard drive. And layers should be set to either single layer or automatic. You also have a couple options to choose from regarding how the DVD will appear when it loads for playback. Disk template determines whether the menus will be black or white. When disk loads tells the DVD player to either show the menu or just play the video when the disc is first inserted. Make sure Use Chapter Marker as Subtitles is not checked. You probably didn't add any chapter markers anyway, but most people don't want text added to the screen, so leave it unchecked just in case. Background gives you a chance to place an image in the menus. It's okay to select an image from your hard drive using the Add button, but because you're using shared computers at CCTV, you must clear this whenever someone else has added an image. Just click the X button next to the file's name. Click Share to proceed to burning the disk. You can check the Background Tasks window to see the progress of the encode, but you'll be prompted to insert a blank DVD before it reaches 100%. When it's time to insert a disk, you'll see two things. A new icon will open in the dock, a small sub-application called Create Disk, and a prompt will appear on screen. Make sure you're using a CCTV-approved blank DVD and insert the disk. When the disk is complete, it will eject on its own. Congratulations, you have finished a project at CCTV.